2016. And to be honest, it's originally started a bit as um, what you might say a twinkle in our eye. Wouldn't that be a cool thing if we could find a way to connect Old Town and Beaverton Central and really create one downtown with two different experiences? Um, back in 2016, we hired the Urban Land Institute to do a technical advisory panel for us. And they were the ones that helped us really start our thinking about this loop concept and all that it could do for our community, including of course, being a transportation corridor for um, pedestrians and bicyclists and runners and in every other kind of mode of mobility. Um, you will find that this project is going to be really interesting. You will find there will be a lot of creative elements to it. And you're gonna find that it's gonna be really challenging at times too, because you'll be balancing different priorities, different considerations. And unfortunately, cost does ultimately need to be one of those considerations. But the team and I have real confidence in you to be able to do this really well because you are from the community. You know this place, you know the businesses, you know what you would like, you know what your neighbors would like to see. So we really value your input in this process and providing the leadership that you're gonna be providing over the next year or so to get us to the completed um, urban design and transportation plan. Each of you also brings different perspectives given your backgrounds what you do for a living, how long you've, you've lived here. And I wanna encourage you to speak up. We wanna hear from you. Please don't be shy. Please don't feel intimidated with some of these really smart and talented people we have on our project team because it's together that we can make something pretty magical happen for our community in Beaverton. Um, I also wanna mention that the Loop Project was recently um, included in the urban downtown design project urban design framework. This is, in my opinion, a pretty transformational plan for downtown Beaverton. This is where we set our destiny, the direction we want to go for the next 20 years. And it's focused on creating an active and a vibrant downtown core and a place that's for everybody in our community whether you wanna to go to the food cart pod or you work here, or you wanna to go to event, an event at the PRCA, we want this to be a place for everybody. There are many exciting projects underway in downtown Beaverton right now. Um, I don't know if you all get out as often as you used to. I know I certainly don't, but I'd like to name just a couple because they all kind of factor into how this loop ultimately will be used by the community. Um, in the Beaverton Central area, we have the Patricia Research Center for the Arts Building and the um, attached Beaverton Central Public Parking Garage. Huge investments, about $90 million of investment in our community to really put a stamp on downtown Beaverton and to create um, an arts and a cultural venue uh, for activities that is found nowhere else on the west side. So we are so proud to be part of bringing this to Beaverton. And of course, we have to thank the Reeser family, Pat, Pat Reeser, for her more than generous contribution. She donated $13 million to the city for the project. Uh, one of the largest art donations ever in the history of the state of Oregon. It's just, it's really remarkable. The parking garage next door will help support people coming to the venue if they don't walk or take light rail. And um, we're about to start leasing the ground floor and, and, and activate that whole area of Beaverton Central with uh, interesting businesses, most likely food and beverage oriented businesses or arts oriented businesses. Uh, directly across the street from the garage is the recently opened Hyatt House Hotel. 125 rooms, it opened in January. Um, that I think is another really incredible amenity for downtown to serve visitors, business people, and of course the PRCA. Um, and the other kind of exciting project in the vicinity of Beaverton Central is something we call uh, Beaverton Central 2, two acre site. We've picked Portland Developer Urban Development and Partners to work with us on creating a kind of new employment 
um, an arts focused area in Beaverton Central. Ultimately, they'll create more than 150,000 square feet of office uh, flex space. And that will be a, another reason for people to come to, to Beaverton Central and to get out on the loop and walk between their office, the food cart in Old Town Beaverton. And um, just to mention a few other um, projects in the, in the Old Town area, many of you, if not all of you, I'm sure have fully taken advantage of um, the restaurant strategy and restaurant row on Watson and First. And Travis, I can't, oh, there you are, my, my screen. Travis is the uh, owner of the Bank of Beaverton building as well as several other properties right at the intersection of uh, Watson and First. He's really been, uh, I think, inspiring to the community. He's come, came in and he believes in Beaverton. He believes in everything that we're doing. And uh, he is personally responsible for some of those great new restaurants that we're enjoying already and will enjoy in the near, uh, near future. Thank you, Cheryl. That's not entirely true. There's a lot of wonderful people who have helped make that happen. I, I feel fortunate to have worked with you or your team and the city and, and there's some talented tenants as well. So it's a really group effort. Thank you, though, for the kind words. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you for believing in us um, when you started this journey two, about three years ago now, I think. Um, and then lastly, let's talk a little bit about the loop planning process that we're about to kick off today. This really is a culmination of several years worth of work. Um, this is a multi-phase process. We've put together, I think, a pretty extraordinary team of um, professionals, and you'll, you'll hear their introductions a little bit later in the agenda, as well as really talented and, and committed staff at the city, as well as participation by different boards and commissions with the city. Um, you, um, you, you're going to learn a lot in this process, and I hope you'll have fun along the way. I hope it'll kind of open your eyes to how complex planning the public realm really is. You're going to know more about travel lane widths and travel speed and sidewalk dimensions and street lighting and all these things that come together to create a public realm. Um, and, and you'll know for, you know forever and ever that you've been a part of this planning process to create this really extraordinary new element of our downtown. And with that, um, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you so much for volunteering your time and your energy and making this work in your schedule. We're excited to get going and I can't wait to, to read the final product. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, and you know we've appreciated uh, all of your very strong support and active involvement in our project. I know you have a lot of priorities. There's a lot of things going on here in the city of Beaverton that you're in, responsible for, and you always give us really some nice personal attention. So thank you for that. Uh, now let me introduce uh, Deb Myhoff, uh, who's from the firm Communitas, who will be facilitating this meeting and all of our other CAC meetings. Hi, Deb. Hi, Dan. Thank you. And thank you, Cheryl, for the great um, kickoff of this group. Again, my name is Deb. I will be here. Um, you may even hear from me in between some meetings. Um, welcome. Uh, it's a large group. Um, and uh, so we have lots of ways we're hoping to, um, to get the most we can out of you all and your good ideas and um, thoughts and opinions as we move through this process. Tiffany, do you have access to share your screen. I thought we would start here just with a quick little overview of the um, meeting we're about to have. This is really just sort of getting our feet under us, making sure we're all on the same page. You all understand the, the task at hand and how we're gonna go about this um, and the decision-making process. And we're really, this is all so that when we get together again in a few weeks, we're really gonna roll up our sleeves and. Um, it'll be more of a work session going forward. Today, we're gonna um, meet all together as one. Uh, here in a minute, I'm gonna um, give you all an opportunity to introduce yourselves to one another. I really wish we were all in the same room together, but here we are virtually. It's great. Um, we're gonna make the most of it here. Um, so Tiffany, if you could just uh, skip to the next slide. Um, so I think some of you probably spend most of your days on Zoom, but not everyone does. And I thought it would just be helpful to give a little uh, recap of some of the highlights that we're gonna work on 
Um, and hopefully you all can read this. This will be a good uh, test of our um, capacity here. Um, but for committee members, uh, I think with a group this large, let's just start with the most important thing. If you are on the community advisory committee, please keep your camera on to the extent that you can, um, but muted your sound off. Um, for those of you on a laptop or a desktop, those controls for Zoom are sort of down the bottom um, of your screen. For those of you on a phone or an iPad, it's often at the top of the screen. Um, or a tablet, sorry. Uh, and sometimes you might have to click um, to find those or to activate those. But if you could um, just double check that you're muted. Um, Jean, who you saw at the beginning of this, has full controls in the background. And if you need help getting muted or unmuted, I think she can help us with that. Um, and then if you're a member of the community who's sitting in, it would be really helpful if you actually turned your screen off. Um, and, and also stayed muted. Um, we will have some time at the end where if you'd like to provide some comments or address the staff or committee um, at each of these meetings, we'll, we'll give a little time, but primarily, and we're really happier here, um, but we are, uh, of course, primary purpose is to hear from our community advisory committee members um, to weigh in on the design and options as we go through. Um, and for those of you sitting in, uh, if you can't make it all the way through the meeting, um, there's a way to uh, get on the Beaverton Loop website um, and you can sign up for updates. We're going to have quite a bit of community engagement um, and various activities for other folks aside from the Community Advisory Committee to weigh in. So make sure you get on the um, mailing list to the email distribution list for that as well. Um, and Dan's contact information, probably Jean's contact information is also there if you have questions or want to follow up. So um, Zoom functions, the other important functions, um, in addition to turning on video, turning off sound as much as possible, um, is uh, chat. Um, and the chat function is where you can type in a note, um, a comment, or a question to us. Um, if you're having some technical difficulties, when you get into that chat room, you can send just to Jean if you want to, or you can send to the whole group. Those are your options. Um, but if you need Jean, if you need some help from Jean just on the technical side of things, um, feel free to send her a note. She's um, she's keeping track of the chat. Um, all of these meetings are being recorded, as you all were uh, requested to attest to. Um, they'll be published on the the project webpage and the community's website, just to, or the city's website, just to um, offer full transparency. And for those who can't make the meeting, they can see what the dialogue is all about. Also, know that the chat function um, is also being recorded. So the chat function gets downloaded at the end and will be appended to any meeting notes that we have. Um, Jean and others are taking some meeting notes. When we get to um, this meeting is unusual because we're going to stay together as one big group the whole time. I think for all future meetings, we'll probably have at least one, maybe multiple small group discussions where we'll break into um, sort of what they call breakout rooms in Zoom, which is just a few of you and a facilitator so we can um, give you all enough time and space to have a conversation um, about what we're putting in front of you. But uh, most importantly, when they're, we're in this big group is to raise your hand if you have a question or go ahead and type in the chat. Um, but the raise hand function there is in the function bar again on your laptop or computer at the bottom, phone or tablet at the top. And it's usually something called reactions and there's a variety of things in there, but um, there's a raise hand function in there. And Jean, when we get to that point of Q&A, Jean's gonna help me um, work through uh, the raise hand function. And the other tool, we have a couple of other things that we're hoping to utilize for each of these meetings um, to make sure that we're hearing from everyone. I mentioned the chat. We will probably also have some polling questions. I don't know, Dan or Jean, did we load in a poll for today, a trial run? I don't think so. Okay, no problem. We did not. Well, that's fine. We'll, we'll, tr we'll try it out next time, but we will have an ability, you know, if you can't, if, not everyone's going to be able to speak in a big group um, the whole time because we just, you know, we're just pressed for time. So we'll have other ways you can weigh in. And then we will also be following up. As I mentioned, we'll have meeting notes. 
with the chat in there, um, but we'll also be following up with a sort of a short survey following each meeting. CAC members can go in and give us additional comments on anything that's discussed. Um, and we'll sort of keep that open for a week or so afterwards. So after tonight, um, we'll send you out a link to that uh, follow-up survey after tonight and get your feedback and, um, and any sort of questions you have or things you would like for the next meeting. Um, and we'll we'll tend to those. And then of course, Dan is um, super accessible, um, as you all probably um, can already attest to. And I'm sure if you send him a note, he could also help or give him a phone call, he can help out. Um, I think that's it for this one. And then I think we're ready to move on for um, introductions. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Let's see. Yeah, why don't we start with our team and then maybe um, Jean and Dan, you all can go after the consultants and then we'll go on to the committee members. Um, so I'll introduce you to Ken Peary with Walker Macy and Tiffany Swift with Walker Macy, um, my colleagues uh, who are priming this project. Hello, everybody. This is Ken Peary. I'm a principal with Walker Macy. Uh, we're landscape architects and urban designers and we're based in Portland. And I just want to say that uh, we are really honored to be a part of this project. Uh, we've uh, really been enjoying working with an amazing city team as we've gotten started in the project over the last uh, couple months. And it, it, we just see this as uh, a project that has the great potential to really transform uh, downtown Beaverton, but in a way that truly reflects uh, your vision and a range of voices, but also just feels truly Beaverton that respects the unique character of your community. So we're really excited to be a part of the project and looking forward to working with you over the next uh, couple of months. And I'll uh, just quickly, before I introduce uh, Tiffany, I just wanted to mention we've got a, a big team. Um, not all of them are joining us tonight. Um, our, my colleague, Mike Zylas uh, with Walker Macy, um, and we've got three firms that we're also working with that are maybe on the more technical side of things. Uh, James McGrath with Nelson Nygaard, Garth Appenitis with DKS and Eric Evans with the Mario. Uh, they're engineers and traffic and transportation experts uh, with a lot of experience in Beaverton and um, we'll be counting on them to help us uh, with the analysis and the, the planning. So I'll pass it over to Tiffany to introduce herself. Hi hey everyone, I'm Tiffany Swift. I'm a landscape and urban designer with Walker Macy. Uh, I'm working closely with Ken and the rest of our project team on this project. Um, yeah, and I would just like to say, I'm, I'm really excited to work with all of you. It's been really interesting um, working on this project to date. It touches so many crucial issues for Beaverton related to um, transportation, equity, sense of place, identity for Beaverton that's really evolving in a really interesting way. And um, we're really excited to, to work with you all. And um, I guess I'll pass it over to Dan and Jean. Uh, hi guys, uh, Dan Turk, project manager. Uh, I just want to say uh, in terms of background, uh, I'm from the Midwest. Uh, I've lived for most of my adult life in the Washington DC area. Uh, I've worked uh, in the area of international development and transportation. Uh, I married my wife, Marnie, uh, who was from Virginia. And uh, this last year we decided to take a new job and, and road trip across the country all the way here to Beaverton. And uh, we have not regretted the decision uh, it's wonderful natural beauty out here, but most importantly, just a lot of nice people that have phenomenally made us feel welcome, even though we really can't see a lot of people personally. And uh, across the board, uh, the people that I've interacted with uh, inside and outside of the city have been very nice people and very good at what they do. And uh, I have a feeling that's also reflective of you guys. You're very good at what you do and very nice people. And it, it just makes the process uh, very enjoyable. Uh, I took this job because I had spent a lot of time working from one place to another uh, and not sort of seeing one initiative go through from beginning to end. And I really wanted to do that at the local level and be responsible for getting things done because that was that's always something that I've admired in the people that I've interacted with. And uh, also uh, just wanted to say uh, my wife Marnie and I and our son Peter are very happy to be 
uh, residents of Beaverton and we're ecstatic that we bought our house six months ago and are not having to put up with this crazy market right now or even crazier than usual market. Uh, so thank you. Uh, and uh, Jean, please take it away. Great. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Jean Seneschal Biggs. I'm the Transportation Planning Manager in the Community Development Department here at City of Beaverton. Um, really excited to have this meeting happen today. Um, this is a project that uh, Cheryl talked to me when I first arrived at the City of Beaverton um, in this position just a little less than two years ago. Um, I feel we're really fortunate to have um, found Dan, who's joined my team. I'm really glad to have him um, be here with us. Um, and uh, just really excited to be working on this sort of a project. Um, uh, some of my work rev revolves around transportation planning and policy. Some of it revolves around transportation funding and, and regional coordination. And then there's this other aspect of it, which I, I like to call sort of major capital projects. Um, and this is one of several in the downtown that we are kicking off um, this year. So really appreciate having all of you um, say yes to our call for this um, advisory committee. And um, I'm happy to be here and kind of working in the background um, and supporting all of you tonight. So thanks. Great, thanks, Jean. Who's it go to next? Yeah, yeah Tiffany, could you move it to the next slide here? I am going to turn it over to all of you to introduce yourselves. Um, and we went ahead and put your names in uh, alphabetical order by last name on the slide so we could follow along. Um, but I think we should just start at the top left and work our way down the left column and then move over. And I'll keep track of your place. Don't worry, I'll call on you. Um, but if you could just tell us your name, um, tell us what your relationship is to downtown and if you belong to an organization you're representing, anything like that. Um, and then just by way to get to know one another, it would be great to hear your story about what drew you to serve on this committee. Um, and so with that, uh, I don't know if Melissa Bell is on with us. Nope. I don't think so. Okay, I'll think, circle, I think she's and here. I'm not sure if Oswaldo is here yet. He, he arrived, he arrived. Oh, he oh wonderful. Um, Oswaldo, if you are ready, uh, why don't you go ahead and kick it off? Sure, thank you very much. My name is Oswaldo Bernal and uh, I am uh, a resident I've been a resident of Beaverton for the last uh, 30, almost 31 years. So basically since uh, we moved uh, from Colombia to the United States, uh, we have called Beaverton our home. And uh, I have been a member of the Diversity Advisory Board for the last uh, six years. And last uh, December, I decided to, uh, well, actually more than over a year ago, I decided to make a move into a, a different board so that I could uh, just learn more about what the city is all about. And uh, I joined the URAC, the Urban Development uh, uh, Renewal Advisory Committee in January. So uh, just by doing all of this work, I just have got it very interested in uh, everything Beaverton. And I uh, hope to be able to assist or uh, contribute in any way I can in, in this project. Thank you. Kira? Hi, I'm Kira Kador. I'm the president of Rimbold. Uh, we're a local family owned real estate development company. We've been around for about 50 years. Uh, over the last four years, we've built about 500 units, uh, apartments in central and old town Beaverton, about 10,000 square feet of retail commercial space, which represents an investment, well, an overall investment of about $130 million. So we're, we just finished Verso on the corner of 2nd and Lombard, and we're in lease up on that one. And so tying all of the communities together with Central and Old Town to me is intriguing. And I got involved because Tyler Ryerson asked me to. Great, welcome. Well, Jeff, ciao. Um, hi everyone, I'm <coughs> Jefferson Chow. I'm the pastor of Beaverton First United Methodist Church on 4th Street. Um, 
I'm, I've been working here for like three years and I've really um, fell in love with this mm -hmm. city. I've engaged deeply with this city and started um, a nonprofit called Wake Up Beaverton, which is also a the first school supply drive, public school supply drive, giving uh, school supplies to immigrants, refugees, and people who are in need. Um, I'm also in other committees in the Beaverton Downtown Association Committee. I recently joined another committee. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> I, I'm in several committees and I can't remember all of them, but I am deeply <laughs> rooted in helping this community grow and flourish. So, yeah. Wonderful, thank you so much. And do you prefer Jefferson? Um, whatever's comfortable, Jefferson, Jeff. Okay, all right, great. Thank you so much. How about Tom? Drain. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tom Drain. I'm the current uh, uh, member of the uh, Central Beaverton Neighborhood Association Committee. I've been chair for the last year and a little bit more and a Central Beaverton resident uh, since 2018. So fairly recent, uh, but wanted to get involved because I'm a big believer in you can't complain if you don't participate. <laughs> And I think this is a, uh, when I heard about the loop, the city came to uh, the <coughs> NAC and, and told us about it. And uh, all of the, the, the board was very excited to hear about this kind of uh, plan to, to unify these two kind of disparate areas. And the more I hear about it, the more excited I get, because I think it can be uh, a real, uh, if, if it's pulled off in the right way, it can be a real jewel and defining characteristic of, um, of Beaverton. And so I'm just excited to be here. And, look forward to the process. Wonderful, thank you. Randy Dunlap. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a retired person. I live in Old Town, Beaverton. Uh, I do a lot of hiking and biking and walking and uh, playing sports. And uh, I'm happy to be here and help out any way I can. Thank you. Excellent. How about Brett? Hi, uh, Brett Francis here. I'm affiliated with Washington County Investments and I uh, manage the property where Damero Ford sits as well as the triangle um, that is just south of the round where uh, there's new vehicle storage and then also uh, Northwest College, there are two buildings there. Um, and uh, Dan asked me to be on the committee, but I also wanted to be on the committee to provide input as a property from a property owner's perspective, and then also from an experience uh, perspective, having been in Beaverton for quite a while. Wonderful, thank you so much. And Ruben? Hi, my name is Ruben Halperin. I am, um, I'm a medical director at Providence Health Plan. So I, in theory, work at Murray Business Center, but for the last year I've been working from home. Um, we moved to Beaverton from Portland when I started working there, and I have really sort of enjoyed the feeling in Beaverton, the attitude of people, how involved people are. Um, I've always spent a lot of time, I, I do a lot of biking and I love walking, and I've really um, kind of enjoyed the potential of downtown Beaverton. And, and um, in my career, I've been in, interested in sort of the intersection between medicine and public health. and. So when this came up, it just seemed like a really um, great opportunity. Um, and I've done, I've done a lot of government work at the state level. I've been on a bunch of different commissions for OHA. So um, I, I like the process and it's interesting to me. And like somebody said before, you can't complain if you don't get involved. And so that's how I got into it. Excellent. It sounds like there's a lot of people that just want to complain more then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> how about Michael? Hey everyone, uh, my name is Michael Hashizume. My pronouns are he, his. Uh, I've been a resident of Beaverton for the better part of 30 years. Uh, I'm on the Beaverton Bicycle Advisory Committee currently. Uh, I was interested in this project because I'm very passionate about active transportation and uh, kind of selfishly, I uh, patronize a lot of the businesses in downtown Beaverton, central Beaverton. Uh, and so I bike and walk through the area a lot. And it's an area, you know, that's fantastic. It's wonderful to see how much it's sort of been growing and thriving. And I'd love to be a part of sort of helping to continue that. Great, thank you. 
and Travis. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Travis Henry. I uh, have a small company, uh, development company, real estate development company, and we've been engaged in some projects in Old Town over the last several years and primarily have been working closely with the city uh, to identify talented you know, tenant groups and to repurpose some of the really cool existing architecture and uh, existing building stock in Old Town to help create a vibrant downtown community. So part of what I really like doing uh, and find rewarding is to kind of have a seat at the table like we're doing now to think through how a community can grow and we can celebrate the assets and the in the community the culture uh and the inhabitants in a way that really creates something uh special and i did hear from a friend today that um there is a real estate group uh called their urban land institute uli and they have conferences so often every so often and today apparently they had a uh, community call and beaverton was celebrated on that multiple times as like a real shining star in the uh in kind of throughout the covid recovery and and also in areas to keep a watch on so i think that the work that many of us are doing uh both on the city side and the and the uh, private side are helping to elevate the visibility of Beaverton. And this is another example of, I think, a project that will help unite. Right now, it has a disparate kind of broken up feel. And we, I think bringing this together will be uh, pay dividends for the community. So thank you for including me. Thank you so much. And Lindsay. Hi, uh, my name is Lindsay Lamphier, and um, I work at Lamphier Enterprises, which is right in Old Town, uh, Beaverton. I work in our corporate office. I um, was born in Beaverton, lived in Beaverton. Uh, I went to University of Portland um, for college, and then shortly after that, uh, in about 2002, started working for my family's business here. And so uh, my kids go to school in Beaverton. My son just recently graduated Valley Catholic. So um, you know, it's really important to me to get involved with our community. And I recently, well, not recently, but two years ago, did Leadership Beaverton and learned so much about our city that I, that I really had no idea, even though I've lived here my entire life. And I've watched, you know, I've watched the city grow, but a lot of things have still stayed the, stayed the same. And so after this uh, um, past year, I decided to make 2021, I wanted to get involved in something. I didn't know what it was. And I think in January is when Dan sent this out and um, sent it to actually to my boss. And he forwarded it to me and because he knew that, and I jumped at the uh, opportunity to get involved with our, with our community. Um, you know, our business flanks both sides of the proposed loop. And so I think it uh, behooves us to be involved and to have a say, and also for, for us to have a, um, for me to get involved you know, with the community, which I've always wanted to do. So I'm really excited to be a part of this and uh, look forward to see how this all goes. Wonderful, glad we got you at the right time. That's yeah. Uh, how about Paige? Hi there, it looks like I, I just joined right at the right time. Oh, hello. Um, <laughs> hi there. I apologize for uh, being a little late, but glad I could uh, glad I could join. Um, so my name is Paige Lerwick. Um, I am a resident of the Vos neighborhood here in Beaverton. I've uh, lived here about going on three years, um, and I also um, am a member of the um, Urban Renewal Advisory Committee. So the Loop project has come up on the um, URAC uh, meetings. We've been, you know, privy to kind of the what's going on and you know what the um we had some presentations on it so it's been it's been really interesting it's definitely something that's piqued my interest and um given my location i mean the the loop area is something that i or is a path or you know whatever you want to call it that i travel constantly whether by bike or car or foot um so definitely very familiar with it and can see you know the the pros and the cons that exist currently. So uh, looking forward to being able to offer some, you know, insight as, as a community member who, you know, utilizes it and, um, you know, I'm very excited about what's going on here in the city, you know, overall. So uh, happy to be part of it. Great, welcome. Thank you. Glad you, glad you popped in just in time. That's excellent. Yeah, right. Yeah. How about Brad? 
Hello, my name's uh, Brad McLean. It's nice to meet everyone. Uh, I grew up in South Beaverton and I, I live in Five Oaks neighborhood. I lived in Beaverton practically my whole life. Uh, I'm a volunteer on the traffic commission. I've been a volunteer since 2010. Uh, I work for First Transit as a public transportation consultant. I kind of work in public transit the last 20 years. So I have a lot of experience in the public transit and how you know things might affect TriMet. Um, and I'm excited about the downtown loop and, and the economic development or the, the improved walkability of the downtown area. Um, obviously, you know, visit Saturday market often and some of those restaurants. So I'm excited about that. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, Young Hui. Hi, um, my name is Young Hui Murphy um, and I go by she, her, hers. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm very excited to be a part of it. Um, I actually own the um, Global Art of Dance uh, building off of Farmington. I am also uh, very active with the Beaverton Downtown Association and the um, Patricia Reeser Center for the Arts Board. So I kind of encompass two ends of the um, loop, um, but I've lived in Beaverton um, for 20 four years now um, and have seen the tremendous development growth uh, of this city from where it was 20 years ago when we moved here to where it is now and I'm super excited to see where it's going in the next 20 years and I appreciate being asked to be a part of it. Really glad to have you here. Thank you. And Kathleen? Hi, um, I'm Kathleen. Uh, I'm a member of the Library Advisory Board also and was um, told about this um, from Dan and um, I've lived in Beaverton since 2010. Um, I moved to go to grad school um, and then right before the pandemic went down we moved to Lofts at the Round um, on Crescent Street. And I use my wheelchair to go all around, up and down Hall Boulevard to the library and all the, I don't know, we're starting to go to like Karina's Bakery and um, all the coffee places and things again. So um, I'm really interested in the scope of the project because I like to eat at all the restaurants and am anxious to be able to do that safely and easily. And, um, oh, and I'm really excited about all of the um, sort of um, community things that take place so here at the Round. They have lots of festivals and things and it's really sweet to see people getting outside and getting together safely. So um, I'm happy to be here and it's nice to meet y'all. Yeah, welcome, thank you. How about Rachel? Hi, I'm Rachel Phillip. Um, I'm a resident in Central Beaverton. Um, I'm also on the Visioning Advisory Committee and I've been getting involved with the Central Beaverton NAC. Um, the reason why I was interested was because I um, basically commuted walking along the Watson half of the loop um, every day <laughs> until, until COVID. Um, so it's, it's like a place that I've been very frequently to get to the max. Um, and I also, um, as someone who's walked that space, um, I, I also live with a young child um, and my mother-in-law and like, I want the loop to be like fully a place I feel safe for people who are very young and also older. Um, and walking some of those intersections don't always feel that way. Um, so I would love to be part of this group and find a way to make those spaces more comfortable and um, really connect. It feels like there's this big divide between the two. So I'm excited to see how we can unify those as a group. Excellent, thank you. And how about Ginger? Hi everyone. Well, uh, I oddly enough do not live in Beaverton, but <laughs> I live in Raleigh Hills, but I have been the farmer's market manager for 26 years. So uh, we were started out uh, where the library sits now. And, uh, you know, all through the years we've transformed, we've moved, 
and we are what we are now, which is pretty spectacular. You know, people often think it's really odd that a suburban area like Beaverton should have a world-class farmer's market. And, um, you know, I would love to say it's because I'm a brilliant marketer, but really it's because of the community and how they've embraced that farmer's market. And the market started originally by the Central Beaverton Neighborhood Association, hi Tom, uh, mm -hmm. as a community gathering place. And I'm thrilled that even after all these many years, the market still is very much, even though it's really big, um, it's very much a community mar uh, gathering place, and it's a place where a lot of things in the in the in the city of Beaverton, whether it's the city itself or with all our community groups, they intersect at one point in time. So, um, obviously, I think uh, as the city grows and it continues to connect and have all these really wonderful amenities to offer its citizens. The loop is just a natural next step in connecting a lot of the really wonderful things that are happening in this city. So I'm happy to be a part of it. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much. How about Ben? Hey, everyone. Good to be here. Uh, my name is Ben Reese. I, uh, before I fell in love with the city of Beaverton, I fell in love with a girl in 2001 that was from Beaverton <laughs> and lived in Beaverton. And so I'd come visit and little did I know I would then also fall in love with the city of Beaverton and moved here in 2010. Uh, in 2015, my wife Lauren and I were fortunate enough to start a coffee shop called Lionheart Coffee Company uh, in the southernmost tip of Beaverton on Shoals Ferry Road. And then at the very end of 2019, right before the pandemic, we opened our second location on Watson and First, right in the heart of Old Town Beaverton. Um, and then for my 34th birthday last year, 2020, I got my very first bicycle, taught myself how to ride a bike, and 450 miles later from just going between Cedar Hills to Old Town Beaverton, I have gotten to know a lot of the different uh, parts and uh beautiful areas of, of Beaverton along there. So I'm just very, um, I'm very excited to be a part of this project as Lionheart Coffee Company is put together to be a part of the community and to build community. Um, there's a lot of great amenities and great spaces that Beaverton has to offer currently and has a bright future in front of it. And so I feel like the being a part of this process of connecting it all together is just another way of ourselves being able to be a part of building the, the community here. So nice to meet you all. Thank you so much and congrats on the bike. It's pretty okay. cool. Thanks. <laughs> uh, how about Brandon? Hi, um, I'm Brandon Sharp, he, him. Um, I am with Ex Novo Brewing. We're right there on the corner of, yeah, Farmington and Watson. And, um, you know, what drew me to serve, uh, I mean, I've seen kind of firsthand in different restaurant projects I've done how density can help an area and uh, make spaces more viable. I definitely resonate a little bit with what um, Rachel shared about walking around. Um, you would be surprised what we witness every day on that intersection there. And just making spaces more comfortable can um, really help uh, make, make this area a destination and sort of help, help the larger community. Um, and so, I'm there to contribute towards that discussion. Um, you know, we also, you know, we, you know, we are a business and a brewery that that donates to charities as a regular part of our mission. Um, and so, um, you know, being able to connect with the Beaverton community and and have such an active um, city um, has been uh, a real sort of pleasure for us to to. Uh, to operate out of, and so I'm, I'm. We're really looking forward to growing and with, uh, with everybody. So thank you for having me. Great, thank you so much. And Scott. Hi, uh, my name is Scott Sloop. I'm a member of the Beaverton Marriage Youth Advisory Board, and I'm also a student at Beaverton High School, which is right in Old Town. Also, uh, I've lived here my whole life, so about 16 years. So. And I, I spent a lot of time in downtown Beaverton, so it's an area that I feel connected to and passionate about improving. So happy to. We're super excited to have you, Scott. Thank you. 
Uh, Stephen. I'm Steve Smelly. <clears throat> I'm with the uh, Beaverton Chamber of Commerce. I serve on the board there and up until just recently served as the uh, president and CEO as an interim director for uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we've been very active in supporting businesses in the area and giving out free PPE all through the pandemic. And uh, so I've spent a lot of time at our office uh, right at the round uh, watching the Patricia Research Arts Center be built and, um, and, and, um, and having a great time watching the city grow. Um, my interest in, in being involved, I've been a Beaverton resident for uh, a number of years. In fact, my wife and I have raised both of our grown daughters uh, in Beaverton. Uh, they both went to Southridge High School when we were in uh, South Beaverton as a resident. And um, I have loved this city so much. I've enjoyed taking my kids when they were young to the farmer's market. And uh, my kids that are older now love Ben's place and hang out at Lionheart all the time. Uh, so that's that's kind of cool. Um, we love going to the uh, the restaurants in town, and uh, I've walked all of the area from South Beaverton at our home, uh, all the way up to um, up to the Patricia Reeser Art Center, and most importantly, I've got a grandson who's 18 months old, and I want to repeat all of the things I did with my daughter with him in an even bigger, brighter, more wonderful community. So I'm excited to be here. Great to meet you guys. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Paul. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Paul Thornton. I own a coffee roasting business in downtown Beaverton, right on the corner of Millican and Hall. It's about a block from City Hall called Thornton Family Coffee Roasters. Um, I have five of my children working with me in this business now. Um, I moved to the Tigard Beaverton area in about 1970. I'm a Graduated Jesuit High School from 1980, um, and um, just love being on this committee. I, I I I'm I participate on a couple of other of the Beaverton committees, um, but um, this one is is um, a little more compelling for me because our business is right in the heart of um, this circle. Um, our neighborhood is. Um, needs help <laughs> um, in that little that little strip there between um, on Millican there between Watson and, and Hall and I'm really looking forward to um, participating and, and contributing what I can so thank you wonderful so great, grateful to have you and Miss Sarah Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sarah Zong and um, I'm happy to be here as well. Um, I work for an organization called Urban Development Partners and we are a developer working with the city of Beaverton on the uh, BC2 site that Cheryl was referring to earlier. So are in the early stages of planning uh, what we hope to be um, a several office building project on that site along with some um, new street improvements and um, some plaza and open space improvements. Um, we're really excited to be engaged with the city of Beaverton on this project and, um, you know, build on all of the great work that other developers like um, Kira and Travis have been doing in the, um, in the district and also on the many investments that the city is making in um, improving the livability and walkability um, in this district. So, um, Really happy to be participating and excited to meet all of you and um, uh, see what's uh, coming next uh, for the loop. Thanks Wonderful, for thank you. Welcome. Thank you all. Um, it, I'm really excited um, about the sort of vast experience and perspectives we have here. And um, it's, it, it's really interesting to think about the kind of design options that we can come up with together and that, that will definitely be our, our work ahead. So um, thank you so much. Um, so Tiffany, if you could take us to the next slide. Um, I'm gonna ask Tiffany and Ken um, just to give a quick little overview of the project. It sounds like some of you are, are up to speed but they can give you a little more detail about where we are and where we're headed here. And I, I think Dan is going to give us- Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. Yes. Oh, that, that's okay, Deb. Uh, Tiffany, are you sharing your screen and I'm just not seeing it? 
She is sharing her screen. Yes. Okay, that's fine. I don't need to see it because I know what it is. Uh, hey guys, thank you for thank you for such great introductions. Uh, you know, I the vibe I'm getting is you know you it's just very friendly. A lot of people putting energy in. You know, that's very important, especially you know the, late at the day when you know this isn't your full time job. You know, the other thing that I that I was catching, you know, a lot of times pride is is given as a negative. You know, pride is a sin, pride is downfall. And, you know, when we were talking about the farmer's market or some of the other things that have already happened here in Beaverton, I could tell people were pride, you know, there was some pride there. And that's a good thing. That means, you know, it's a reward to, to accomplishing something that wasn't easy and doing it with other people. So hopefully we can build on that through the loop. You know, it's not going to be easy. There'll be some tough decisions. But, you know, I think all of us can are going to be able to feel really good and, and, about it. Uh, and uh, anyways, that's just an observation. Uh, so Tiffany, uh, so, uh, you know, shoot, let me see if I can, uh, uh, hold on, I'm not seeing the screen. So I don't know what, what <laughs> one you're on, Tiffany. Uh, I'm on the first one, community vision. Okay. All right. So uh, with the few minutes that I have, I'll just give you guys a little bit of background. Uh, in, in terms of the project, uh, let me just get a uh, speaker gallery. There we go. Okay, great. Now I see it. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, a lot of the Cheryl's covered, so I will uh, I will go through rather quickly. Um, I think that uh, I think it was Travis that mentioned uh, ULI. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, well, first let me just talk about uh, you know Beaverton's community vision or official vision really highlights that down, having a vibrant downtown is something not just to help the downtown area, but a community priority for all of Beaverton. Uh, next slide, please, Tiffany. Uh, so let me just talk about a little bit of the, com the, the urban context. You know, what we can see here in this picture, the loop is outlined. Uh, it really is in a unique, uh, uh, unique location. Uh, for connecting two big parts of activity of downtown Beaverton, but then also in a unique uh, location to be able to provide uh, a common identity for both areas. Uh, go ahead, Tiffany. So as I skipped ahead too much before, uh, the concept, the seed of the loop concept was really planted in a collaboration with the city and the Urban Land Institute, the city brought in some different experts to, to help us think through how to best redevelop the downtown. And they identified the loop context, the loop concept as something that uh, to create a connection that was missing between the northern part of the downtown and the southern part of the downtown. Next slide, Tiffin. So in 2017, the city launched a massive and very important uh, study called the Downtown Design Project that really wanted to identify some practical ways that we could achieve this community vision of a vibrant downtown. Uh, next slide, Tiffin. One of the main products of the Downtown Design Project was the Urban Design Framework, which was approved by the City Council a few months ago. And its purpose is to or provide a high level organizing structure to guide a lot of the changes and improvements that we'd like to see to make a vibrant downtown reality. Uh, and the loop, again, was identified as a central feature with the role of providing connectivity and navigability to help people get around. Uh, next slide, Tiffany, please. So this is my last slide. Uh, just like to, uh, I, uh, uh, to highlight to you guys where we are in the process for the loop. Uh, we are in the planning process. Uh, in a lot of ways, the planning process is, I believe, one of the most important steps, which is basically where you take all of the information and ideas and conversations that have been going around when you're trying to scope the project and figure out what it is and come to some agreement as, as to a coherent plan or vision to move forward. And then the remaining steps of the design and the, the construction and the execution are really following up on uh, the decisions that were made during the planning process. And this is why it's critical that we have you guys here to be part of the decisions and the conversation that'll guide that, uh, that decision. Um, let's see. Uh, 
I think that's all I that's all I had to say. You know, please keep in mind a lot of work has been done up to to get us to this point. And after we do what we need to do, a lot of work is still gonna gonna need to be done. So we need to keep keep in mind, you know, where we are and uh, you know what our goal is. Really coming together uh, on a plan that can that we can support that gives us really a a, a good vision. Uh, a practical vision as to what to do. So with this, I'll pass it on to Ken Perry, who I'm very happy to work day to day with. He works with Walker Macy. He's the project manager for the, the construction, uh, for the consult, sorry, for the consultant. And I enjoy, uh, you know, Ken working with you and Tiffany, uh, you know, as much as we do. Uh, it's really just nice to spend time with you guys and you're very good at what you do. Uh, Ken's gonna talk about uh, uh, the process of this planning phase, the steps, and importantly, uh, the product. Take it away, Ken. Great. Thanks, Dan. And thanks for your kind words. I, I, I can't uh, not return the, the uh, praise. <laughs> uh, absolute pleasure working with you and Jean and, and Francisca and the rest of the city team. Uh, so I just wanted to build on what Dan was saying in terms of this being sort of part of a continuum of really exciting work that's been happening um, and it really, it started about 10 years ago. So we're, we're sitting on a really strong framework of uh, previous studies that have happened. And another thing that's probably worth pointing out is that, you know, as a planner and as a designer, there's nothing more frustrating than if we do plans that don't go anywhere, that don't get implemented. And it's really clear to see that a lot of the plans that have been done in Beavers in the last 10 years are leading to action. They're being implemented, they're being worked on and being refined and leading to actual improvements that you're seeing right now and will continue to see. So I think that that's an important uh, point to make. And some of you may have been involved in some of these studies over the last uh, 10 years. You're involved in this study and you may be involved in uh, a number of concurrent and subsequent efforts that are going to happen. So just to point out a couple of highlights uh, in the top left, as a box, we've got all that great work that's informed uh, and shaped the, the loop as an initial concept, um, starting with the civic plan and the urban renewal plan and getting somewhat refined through the Creekside district that focused on the north side of the loop, um, all the way through uh, the community vision plan that uh, Dan mentioned. And then the, the really key piece was the downtown design project that uh, fleshed out some initial ideas from the ULI and figured out this really strong concept of a connected loop to, to link together all this emerging energy uh, in the north with the, the sort of unique character of Old Town. So then uh, this downtown um, design project has really been supplemented by the, the downtown design development code, which has just been adopted, which is really going to be instrumental in shaping the built environment in downtown Beaverton. Um, and you'll start to see um, that reflected in future redevelopment and renovation. So if you think of that piece shaping the buildings, we're really looking at what we call the public realm or public space. So the areas between the buildings, uh, but we do think of it as a whole, that the two are very interrelated. So as we move to the arrows at the bottom of the slide, you can see there's, there's a lot of different work uh, that is um, also supplementary and complementary to the work we're doing. And you may be involved with some of these F parallel efforts, but I would definitely encourage you to check the city's website uh, to see about some of these. So they range from uh, the downtown equity strategy uh, there's a more detailed look at the stormwater treatment for downtown. Uh, Dan is going to be part of a study looking at extending Millican Way in downtown. There's a, an effort to look at street standards, at parking downtown, at branding Beaverton Central, and then an open space study, uh, particularly focused north of Canyon. So it's just some really exciting work that's happening. And again, if you want to find out more about these parallel studies, We'll mention it as we go through the project, but also check out the, the city website. So the next slide. Um, so our, just a, a simple look at um, the structure of our project. There's gonna be four key tasks. And we've been working from about November, just sort of setting the, the groundwork uh, for our discussion today. Uh, we've been sort of exploring the loop, um, getting the project set up, um, 
touring the loop with a group of city staff and with a technical advisory committee, really exploring existing conditions and opportunities and constraints. And after our meeting today, we're gonna to share uh, these findings on existing conditions with you uh, in a month at our next CAC. And, and maybe that's a, a good way of describing how we'd like to interact with you through each of these phases. Uh, we wanna make efficient use of your time and, and respect your time and get your productive guidance. So we've set these CAC meetings at the end of each key task. So while we're doing inventory and analysis right now, we're gonna make sure that it's refined and we're, we've got some, some good thoughts and some good questions for you so that we come back and on April 21st, you'll be able to um, give us um, efficient input. And then there's this uh, sort of a parallel uh, effort that Deb's leading in terms of uh, getting some creative input and, and a range of engagement from different voices in the community. And when we come to our third CAC, we'd like to um, loop you into that. Sorry for the pun, that happens a lot. I would like to work that, work you into that process too and, and share and get your ideas about the vision uh, for the loop. Then also concurrently, we'll be starting to develop some initial alternative ideas for the loop. And you'll have a very important role in helping us uh, look at first preliminary ideas and then getting to a preferred plan in, in September and ultimately, uh, this will be going to the city council for adoption. So they, they will be looking for strong support from this committee and from the public. So next slide. So you may be wondering what is going to come out of this process? Uh, what does Walker Macy and team produce? So as landscape architects and, and urban designers and, and engineers, uh, we're really focused on um, coming up with something that's visionary and inspires people, but also is looking towards implementation and looking towards getting something built. So it's really important that we come up with a concept that's buildable, but also that's listening to the community vision uh, and also gets in, has strong support from you uh, particularly, but also um, in the community. And again, the city council is going to want to, to see that. So a range of different things that you'll be seeing as we go through this, this um, process, uh, we'll be producing plans of the loop. We'll be looking block by block um, at the street and sidewalk configurations. We'll be looking at how the loop um, relates to adjacent properties. Uh, we'll also be looking at key locations where we think it's important to try to get some gateway treatments. So maybe in the South, with, as you're arriving at City Park and the farmer's market, the library, what are some things that can strengthen that identity? Similarly from the north coming from uh, Cedar, Cedar Hills, uh, right at the round, that's a really interesting intersection. So could um, receive some sort of really special treatment as a gateway to the loop. Other more detailed aspects, we'll be looking at high level cost estimates of the improvements, the ideas we come up with. We'll look at prototypical blocks in, in more detail. We'll, we'll be looking at uh, how to handle stormwater treatment within uh, the loop. And then finally, it's really important, as I mentioned, to think of something that's buildable and results in action. So uh, an implementation strategy will include uh, your priorities, maybe a way of phasing improvements over time, thinking about how we can work with adjacent private um, development to, to help realize aspects of the loop. And then the term tactical urbanism uh, might not be familiar to everybody, but basically that means uh, testing ideas with temporary installations of improvements. You might have seen in other communities, they might use things like hay bales or traffic cones to just sort of try and um, illustrate for people in a three-dimensional way what is proposed. And, and you can sort of treat it as a, a fun community activity over a weekend or a week uh, just to build excitement uh, and, and energy. And we'll also identify any subsequent studies that are needed and more detailed analysis. So just as an example, the next slide, this, this is another project that we worked on in Seattle. Uh, and so um, th this is, you know, we'll be looking at site specific uh, aspects of the, of the loop, but it, this is not at the level of engineered detail that someone could then take our drawings and go build it, uh, but certainly needs to express and illustrate a vision that's inspiring um, and is also uh, a really good solid guide uh, for subsequent improvements and for people to understand um, the vision. So with that, I will pass it back to Deb. Yeah, 
Yeah, and we have just a little bit of um, extra time here. Does anyone have any questions about the project in general before I go into the role of the CAC specifically? You can go ahead and raise your, you can physically raise your hand, wave it, or you can raise the hand on the computer function, which would probably be easier for us to track. Uh, Ramesh, we'll have um, time at the end uh, for public comment. Yeah, just give us a little bit of time here. Okay, great. Um, so Tiffany, if you wanna, oh, you've already done it, thank you. Um, great, so uh, thank you all for bearing with us here. Future meetings, I think we'll be spending more time um, hearing from you, but uh, just to sort of get us all oriented. Dan sent out ahead of time the um, charter for the Community Advisory Committee sort of outlines the, the purpose and how you fit into the bigger picture. Um, I think a really important piece uh, that can express through the schedule is, you know, really seeking to get your input at the right time um, to help shape and define those design alternatives and ultimately sort of choose, choose the path forward. Um, but as you uh, wit bore witness through the introductions, I mean, we've um, assembled this group to bring local knowledge, lots of different expertise um, or perspectives and community expertise um, and a fresh set of eyes and um, folks that have been living in Beaverton for a long time, all of those things um, to really help us understand how to make it work better and especially how to make traveling about the loop work better and be more enjoyable, um, whether you're in a car, on a bike, on foot, rolling about in some other manner. Um, so, and you will be helping, um, as per the charter, helping advise our project team um, on how to do that. And we'll be presenting some options and ideas and potential solutions for some of the more common um, technical problems and seeking your advice on the, on the best foot forward. Um, ultimately, as Ken mentioned, City Council will be the final, or, or Bureau Board will be the final decision makers. Um, but you'll be advising the project team and, um, and we'll make sure they hear your input and ideas and discussion, um, as well as understand sort of how we considered that and, and um, incorporated that into the designs. Um, as you know, just like this one, uh, we'll be, uh, we have four more meetings after this. They'll all be facilitated discussions. I mentioned earlier that we'll have some breakout rooms and some other ways for you to really dig into the designs and discussion um, and help us design some solutions for, for the problems out there. Uh, I thought it would be helpful just to recap um, quickly the roles and responsibilities of the CAC and then also our commitments um, on the project team to you and um, the commitments of the city to you. Um, but CAC members, especially this is, a, you know, it's a super important project as we all know. It's a fairly contained time frame because we'd like to get some momentum going so um, we can get some funding and move this project forward. Um, so it would, we, we commit to you that we'll send you materials in advance. Our, our aim is to send you at least a week in advance. Um, we are asking CAC members to prepare um, for those meetings by reviewing the materials we send you in advance. And um, you can always let us know if you have questions about the materials ahead of time, but if you could at least read through what we send you. Um, and especially the agenda, we'll, we'll do our best to make sure we, we put specific discussion questions that we'll be exploring on the agenda so you can kind of understand what you might be reviewing for. And then, of course, I don't think this is a problem, but um, we just ask CAC members to sort of work, work with one another, listen, um, listen openly and honestly, um, but also, you know, clearly and respectfully provide some feedback and it's okay to disagree. You don't have to always agree with one another. That's why you're all here. Um, but if we can just be respectful and um, make sure we, we give time for everyone to express their opinions and ideas and I'll, I'll help with that as well. And then of course, open and constructive dialogue 
Um, and as I just mentioned, you know, diverging opinions um, are, are welcome. I mean, you all can agree, that's okay too. Um, but if you don't, it would be good if you let us know um, where you disagree with things so we can make sure those are aired and discussed and um, at least documented if, if we continue along and not everyone agrees with the solutions that could happen, we hope not. Um, we are seeking uh, CAC members to be a sounding board for our project team. This is a very collaborative experience for everyone. Um, and that's how, we, that's how we do our best work is when we're really collaborating with you, with these community experts. Um, and then for those of you who are here sort of representing organizations or affiliated with other organizations in Beaverton, we request that you share this information that you're getting from these meetings, you connect folks to the project in whatever way that seems appropriate. And if you're hearing rumblings or um, ideas or comments from folks out in the community sort of highlighting those um, in our discussions. And then, uh, you know, minor minor issue, if you're unable to attend a meeting, if you could let us know in advance, um, we can also sort of take your, it's, it's really great if you let us know a little bit of advance so that we can take your comment and bring those into the discussions as well for that meeting that you might be missing. Um, and then of course, we'll always have a follow-up survey that you could weigh in that way as well. And then our commitment to you, as I mentioned, um, you know, is to make sure that everyone's heard, your ideas are vetted um, and brought forth, um, and that we really consider this in our technical work um, and really think about all the things we're hearing from you all um, and finding the best path forward. And then, of course, accurately documenting that in all of our meeting notes and all of the information. Um, and that's a super important piece because it's not just those of us who are here in this room today, but um, our you know, city leaders and other community members who are dialing in will want to understand the, what, what sort of propelled us to um, whatever direction we go with the design. And then we also, as I mentioned, will prepare um, uh, meeting materials in advance and we'll show up with a follow-up survey afterward. Um, we'll make sure to keep you informed um, about how your input's used um, and, and um, how it was considered. And then we'll also make sure that we're sharing things that you tell us with our, we have a technical advisory committee made up of um, other folks in the city who have some sort of relationship to the loop um, in their work, as well as other agencies um, like Clean Water Services and Walton Hills Parks and Rec, who also have responsibilities and some connection to, to Beaverton Loop um, work. So we'll make sure that they're aware of our conversations and ideas and um, concerns that you all bring up. And then finally, um, it's, it's my job um, and those are my colleagues to make sure that we're using your time well um, and hopefully if we're doing it really well, having a little fun in the process, making this an enjoyable experience so you would like to sit on committees again um, or participate in this sort of process again. Um, if you could go to the next slide, Tiffany. Yeah, so this um, can give you a, a preview of sort of what's happening here, but we, we've I, maybe the bigger summary here is we've given quite a bit of thought to how the CAC fits into the bigger picture of the process. There are a lot of people that are providing input. Um, and if you start with the sort of clear circle there, that's the sort of start of the creative cycle for each of our tasks, you know, the um, needs and analysis, project goals, defining the options, choosing an option. Um, PMT is the project management team. That's our smaller group of um, consultant and city staff. There's a slightly larger group of city staff that join us in the core team. Um, and then there's the technical advisory committee, that's the TAC. And then the CAC, that's you all down at the bottom there. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, and then everything that goes through this whole cycle ultimately ends up to the, um, the Bureau Board. That's the Beaverton Urban Renewal Agency Board, um, which is the city council and a few committee members that serve in that uh, official role to make decisions about funding for the urban renewal area. Um, there are many points in the sort of red arrows where we will be seeking broader community input through other activities, um, briefings with other organizations and committees throughout the city. Um, I will be making sure and the team will be making sure you're aware of other 
community involvement activities that we engage in along the way as well, but newsletters and whatever, you, I'm sure you'll be hearing from us in there. If you could go to the next. Yeah, so just to recap um, sort of how that all sort of nests together, those CAC meetings are happening on that cycle um, that we're going through and then go ahead to the next one. And so just um, to the point of the community advisory, I'm sorry, community participation, your community advisory, um, the other community participation activities, we've sort of broken it up into kind of quarters of the project, if you will, or roughly and kind of what's happening in those. You can see from this that the community advisory committee is a really important connection and piece to our larger community participation, community involvement strategy. Um, we are undergoing some um, storytelling interviews with some community members that we often don't hear from to make sure those perspectives are are really well understood and are elevated and I'll, I'll help you I'll be reporting on those and um, we'll make sure you all get the reports out on those so you can also benefit from understanding that um, starting in uh, April we'll be having a sort of community mapping exercise for all sorts of folks to participate stay tuned um, we'll do a virtual open house. We'll also have a survey when we get to the point where we have some design options, some choices to make, and, and we kind of understand what the trade-offs between those choices are. We'll do a larger survey. Um, we'll probably be coming to you and asking you to help make sure folks are aware that that's, out, that's available for a way to input and asking you to make sure to tell your friends and family to participate. That would be great. Um, we'll do some other additional follow-up interviews with the um, storytelling folks just to make sure that our options are sort of in the right spot um, and considering lots of things. And then, of course, there'll be a more formal adoption process um, and community testimony. Next one. I think we're just about to the end here. Yes. Um, we're to the point where uh, CAC members can <laughs> ask your questions. Um, specifically, if you have any questions uh, or need some clarification about the your role in charge or our role in charge in this project, and by our, I mean the project team, the city consultant project team. Um, if you have any questions about where you fit in the process or the planning process or what we're gonna end up with in the end, please let us know, or just general comments about the project. We have time if you want to go ahead and raise your hand. Nothing too late in the day. It's warm and sunny out. <laughs> you know, Deb, that's OK. They can relax this meeting. Every other meeting from now on, we're going to ask you guys to do a lot of totally. work. We're going so. to put you to put you to big work. I do see, Tom, you have your hand up. <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so in talking about the, the planning process and the products, um, I know that something has come up and, and I, when Dan brought this to the CBNAC, I, I mentioned the same thing. Um, kind of the, the, the major barrier that's, that's in, in this is the, the two state highways and a railroad. And since this is a city led project, how much of the scope is going to be able to affect those crossings or those areas? I don't know if you're prepared to address yeah, anything like question. that I don't, or not. It might be a follow-up, but let me see, Dan or Jean or um, Ken or Tiffany. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer Tom uh, and, uh, you know, Jean, please, please add anything. Uh, the short question is uh, you're jumping ahead a little bit in your excitement uh, in terms of the process. You know, next time we're really going to throw at you the existing conditions and looking at opportunities and constraints, and you've identified uh, one of the constraints. So, you know, we're certainly, we're certainly going to have a, a full discussion about that. Uh, I would just answer very generally at this point, and hopefully it's consistent with the answer that I gave before, which is, uh, you know, it is a constraint, uh, but what we're most concerned about in this planning process is really finding out what, what it is that we would like to have this project accomplish, what goals and then by what means we think we can accomplish those goals. So that is, that is, that is the, primary, uh, the primary thing that we're thinking about. And these other things, yes, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't say everything is possible. There are a lot of constraints, but you, know, you really have to start with, with what it is that you're trying to accomplish and you know, what, what is it that, what vision or goal 
has the most support among a diversity of people. Jean, I don't know if you wanted to add anything. I know that's a question we've received times before. Sure. Um, uh, you know, uh, yes, so Canyon Road um, belongs to the Oregon Department of Transportation. Actually, Farmington Road is um, owned by the city of Beaverton. It's our facility. Um, go a little bit further out and it's State Highway um, uh, and the railroad. So just on this project alone, Dan, we mentioned earlier the Technical Advisory Committee. So we have staff from ODOT participating in this process. Um, and we have sort of avenues for communicating with um, railroad staff and um, staff specific to um, ODOT that work solely on railroad crossing safety. Um, we'll be engaging with them as we come up with alternatives and, and want to talk with them about here are some um, design ideas that we have and we're going to want to get their feedback on them specifically. So um, yes, we recognize there's a, there are both of, you know, all of those facilities are barriers. Um, in the downtown, um, but probably some of the biggest challenges that we have on this project, frankly, is just how do we create an experience that's more comfortable for people walking and biking and taking transit um, that's right in the middle. So uh, there are definitely going to be um, uh, people that we we talk with more um, as we get a little bit further along in the process. So I think there's some, there's possibilities. How, how, how about I say that? Okay. There's some unique design challenges. <laughs> with lots of opportunity for creativity. Yeah. Um, great. Kathleen, you have your hand up. Yes. Um, I have a question, I guess, about protocol. Um, if we did get community questions or comments or whether solicited or not, um, how should we, should we pass that on to every member of the board in an email or wait till meetings or I don't know those things need to be I don't know forwarded to everyone right away or just one person I don't know great question I don't know that we have sorted out a protocol for that but I'll look to Jean or Dan to let me know if I've mistaken on that and if not we can come up with one and get back to you about the best way to handle that I think it's emailing one of us, but let me just um, let us let us let you know about that. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any other CAC member questions or comments or information you think would be helpful? Anything from the Oh, yeah, go ahead, Lindsay. Sorry, I looked on the reactions. I don't have the hand raise reaction or sorry. emoji. I didn't want to put the clapping one. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, okay, so this is my first committee. And so if this is a silly question, um, you know, I'm just taking in all of the information that you guys just provided, which was amazing. Thank you. So just uh, to clarify our, our roles here in this committee. So I looked on the timeline that you provided, I think, um, Ken, I'm sorry, the uh, provided that you guys have been working with them since last um, November. Okay, so what in their landscape urban design company, you know, do you have a, you know, what, what plans have you, do you have plans that you're going to share with us of of like what you, you know, vision, I'm sure you guys have your like goal of like, this is what we want. So what, what roles are we going to be able to play in changing kind of like what vision you guys have already kind of come up with over these last few months? So Lindsay, this is a great first question, especially from someone who's never been part of these committees. You know, you, you were looking at the materials we gave you and you can definitely tell that there's been work going on for a good amount of months before today. Uh, so your question is very apt. To, to answer it, uh, and, and Jean, please add anything that you see fit. Mainly the work has been going on setting up the public participation process, which has been very important. Uh, doing the inventory of the existing conditions and looking at the opportunities and constraints. So it's really been just getting the information together and then in a good form that we can begin to start looking at alternatives. But we're not going to begin looking at alternatives fully 
until we get feedback from you guys about, hey, are we seeing the existing conditions correctly? Are we seeing opportunities and constraints? Maybe we're missing something. So it may look like you're coming in late in the process, but what you're really missing is just a lot of the detailed work to go out there and get information and put it in a form that can be used and be useful. So you haven't missed out on anything. And, and you know, we will be coming to you at opportune times with very specific information to ask you for your feedback. Does that help, Lindsay? Hi, helps. Oh, yeah, yes, thank you. That's great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 help you through it. Our, our ideal is we might be tossing out some ideas just to get the conversation started, but it's certainly nothing will come to you fully cooked, and um, you have to argue to change it. That's not the idea at all. Um, it's you know to be more provocative and um, just talk to you all about what the trade offs are and various choices and um, how to move forward from your perspective. And, and just to follow up on that, I'm sure that all of you knows the loop enough to realize that there's an an incredible amount of complexity out there. Lord, there's there's every block sometimes has three different right, right of ways and a lot of different things happening. So I think that you can appreciate by just going out there and categorizing the information and putting it in a useful visual form in an organized fashion does take a while. Anyone else have a question before we go to our guests? Looks like Brett does. I have, I have one quick question. Is there, do you have a general idea of what the budget is for this project? For construction budget or? Uh, yes. <laughs> Man, you guys are good at what you do. Those are tough questions. I'm, I'm going to let Jean answer that one. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so um, in specific just to this project, um, the consultant team that we've hired, the um, Bureau has a contract with Walker Macy um, as the lead on the team. It's a, a just about a $250,000 contract for the work that's, that's been ongoing and will finish up in September. Um, we do not yet have um, a, a, a specific path forward for moving into the next phase, right? So we hope by September, we want to take a plan to council um, and uh, have them consider it, hopefully adopt it. Um, there is some funding that has been set aside in the Bureau budget. Um, it's a little over five million dollars, um, and that's really, I, I, as a as a sort of a staff person, I look at that as really helpful funding for us to have to leverage other other dollars um, that may be out there to help us build this project. So um, there's some budget set aside. At this point, though, we don't yet know what we're going to build. Mm -hmm. or what we want to build and how much it will cost. So that's why when you, if you remember in the presentation, mm -hmm. one of the things that will, um, two of the things that we'll get that will be helpful for that are planning level cost estimates and an implementation strategy. And when we talk about that implementation strategy, we'll be thinking about what other funding resources are out there, what are, um, how might we phase the project through construction, um, what are sort of the most important things that we need to accomplish, um, that we want to see happen sooner rather than later, that sort of thing. So there's more discussions to happen, um, but we do have. We're, we're fortunate that we have um, really such a large amount of local funding available, um, and I just look at that as really um, just a great resource for us to think about other funding opportunities that might come up. Um, those may be happening from the federal government. Um, there's funding sources that might come direct to us. There's funding sources that flow through um, an application process that happens through Metro or our regional government. So um, we'll be looking for those opportunities and we will let you know when they arrive. And, and Jean, you. and Jean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, that's not at all uncommon in terms of the, 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 you know, where we are in the life of the project to not have, you know, full funding yeah. secured. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's actually very uncommon to have as much money as we already have at this point set aside in the Bureau budget. Most projects do a planning phase like this and then go seek funding um, because there isn't anything else set aside. So we're in, a, we're in a pretty good position already from the start. So, and that really just speaks to the, uh, how important the loop has been already identified 
um, by the Bureau Board as a, as a priority in the downtown. So. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? All right. I'll give you one more chance at the end here. Um, why don't we give a little time? We're ahead on our agenda. We'll go ahead and give a little time to our guests. And then um, Jean has a fun, I think fun, homework assignment for next time. Um, and we'll we'll wrap it up after that. Um, Ramesh, thank you so much for your patience. You had a question for Ken or a comment? Well, thanks for the uh, time you're giving me. Uh, I, I'll say the question for Ken for some time later. But, uh, before everything, I just want to wish you guys all a good evening, even though it's very early good morning here in India, calling in from. Wow. Uh, I just want to spend about a minute to tell you about myself. i uh, been in Beaverton since 1991. Children, family, everything has been Beaverton uh, only. Uh, I've served on the Beaverton Diversity Advisory Board for three years. Happy to see a familiar face here. Hi, Oswaldo. How are you? And uh, I've been involved with the Beaverton Police Department, the Washington Elections Committee. I volunteered with the Jesuit High School. I'm a notary public and I do free notarization for friends, family, and anyone who comes by. Um, we've loved Beaverton so much that we haven't moved out even if after I retired from corporate life after about 28 years. I worked for Intel for 28 years and right now enjoying some free time volunteering my time. Uh, I hope uh, for a couple of silly reasons, I was not able to, or I did not want to sign up uh, for this uh, commission or for this committee, but I hope you guys will be uh, open to non-CAC members also contributing and providing their ideas, suggestions, and uh, conversations uh, going forward. I do plan to attend as many meetings as I can uh, from as a guest or as a public uh, contributor. Uh, and uh, would really love to see this wonderful uh, forum uh, be helpful in those things. My interest in trying to call into this is because uh, whenever I'm in Beaverton, I do something like a six mile walk every morning. And I've probably roamed all streets in and around Beaverton downtown all the way from Canyon Drive up to the uh, 26 walkway on one side, on the Fifth Avenue, all the way up to Marine back, or on the Raleigh Hill side, going on 78 and coming back on Laurelwood. Lots of it. I think I've walked most of those roads as many times that if I just let my shoes sit on the porch, the shoes will walk away into one of those tracks, those wonderful loops. And I'm an avid biker. I bike a lot, uh, mostly outside of uh, uh, downtown streets. We do the banks where only at least five times a year. We do the spring water corridor about five times a year. And we also do the um, West Union loop several times. I'm just saying that to just give you guys a little glimpse into my interest and in why I want to be involved in trying to contribute into this. Uh, I had a whole lot of ideas and suggestions on this. When, when I was sounding this out was when someone said, hey, why are you not on CAC? Why are you not get, getting involved? And I will definitely get involved. I definitely like to contribute. And uh, looks like this has, um, uh, with the way it has started, it's going to be a very vibrant, very inclusive kind of a forum and let's go forward. Uh, just to give you an idea of some, I know that there's already a loop plan that's already in place and uh, some of the work has already been done. Uh, but even within those confines, I have a few ideas that I'll probably share as we go along. Uh, one of them is about uh, how the loop itself to be enjoyable and effective. We need to think about some, uh, some topics around the periphery that kind of feed into the loop. Uh, this is something that I've put a little bit of thought on. Uh, I've also thought about some things around uh, this loop and this loop improvement doesn't have to be only for the Beaverton residents. In my way of looking at it, it should not only be an everyday enjoyable walk or a bike around the Beaverton for local residents, but it should also be like a, an attraction for casual visitors to the metro area so that they come and say, hey, have you heard of the Beaverton loop? Let's go there this evening. So I want it to be I, I kind of want to bring some ideas which will make this loop uh, 
uh, include that kind of a vision. And there are some more details, things about um, the train tracks, not the uh, west or the uh, max tracks, but there's also another rail track, uh, how that can be part of a of an attraction or a loop that will feed into the viewed and experience of some of the things and, and so on. Uh, I hope that I'll have the opportunity. I hope I'll have the time and I hope I'll have the uh, patience to come spend the time with you guys and contribute. I have a meeting set up with Francisca Rose about, in about two weeks time and I'll probably uh, be going over some of these other details. Uh, hopefully, a small percentage of it will stick so that I'll have the satisfaction of having contributed to a beautiful and better view of them. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us so early in the morning in India. Anyone else, any of our other guests, would you like a couple of minutes to comment or have questions? Just give it one more second. I make sure I'm not missing someone waving their hand. All right. All right, very good. Jean, I'm gonna hand it over to you to give a preview of what, what folks can do before we meet again. Okay, great. Give me just a sec. As the master controller, I have way too many buttons <laughs> at the bottom of my screen. Um, okay. I think I found it. Okay, you guys seeing my screen? Okay, let me make this a decent size. So um, you saw on the agenda that uh, we, we have a homework assignment for you all and I'm here to present it to you. Um, although I've changed it to an activity, um, you know, I have an 11 year old and all of his work is homework because they're at home. Um, so uh, we call this activity Picture the Loop and, um, you know, as uh, Dan and Francisca and I and Deb and um, Ken and the team, um, one thing that we have talked about is that typically what we would do on a, in a process like this with a group like you is that we would find a time to go on a walk. Um, I often call them working walks, where we would gather, um, we would find a time, uh, spend an hour or two walking together as a group. Um, sharing thoughts and ideas, pointing out the things that are important or significant to us. Um, because of COVID, we can't do that. But what we want to do is um, encourage all of you to spend some time on your own, um, walking the loop and documenting um, those places that are important to you or the places that you really would like to see changed as, um, as through this project. So we're going to send this to you afterwards. Dan will send it out, but I'll walk it walk you through this tonight. Um, so uh, really want you to just encourage all of you to spend some time um, on the loop. You've heard about our project now, so you now are a little bit more informed about kind of the, the process we're about to go on. So you've probably like we've probably all spent time on the Holland Watson couplet, but now you're a little bit more um, informed about what we're here to do. So um, this is a good opportunity for you to go and revisit. Um, uh, the Hall and Watson couplet. Um, again, it's all about orienting ourselves as individuals, but also each other because of the sharing that we're going to do um, at our next meeting um, to talk about um, what you all come back with. And then um, you heard from Dan and Ken about this existing conditions inventory and our opportunities and constraints analysis. This is sort of documenting everything that's there today and then looking at it to see what um, what opportunities are there that um, for change that we might be able to make happen? What are the things that are really tough, right? We've already talked about um, the railroad tracks and the highways that run right through the middle of the loop. So these are your instructions. Um, find some time to walk and experience the loop. Um, as I said, you can go on your own. If you have a friend like your walk, your COVID walking buddy that you want to go walk with, go, call up your friend and say, let's go do this. Or if you um, have a reason to go out um, with your family and go on a walk with them, do that. Um, I would say for this, plan on spending at least 45 minutes. Um, if you have more time, great. It'll just give you more time to linger and stroll and explore. If you have less time, maybe then just focus on a, on a certain area and, um, and uh, do your um, photography there. But the idea is you're gonna go out and take photos. So dress for the weather, wear your mask, go on out. Um, have your phone or if you have a camera, a real camera, use that. Um, 
you might want to bring a notepad to jot down um, your, your thoughts as you um, walk around. Um, but think about, as you walk around, think about what you notice. Um, pay attention to what your senses pick up on, sights and sounds and smells and feelings, um, and really take, take pictures to capture that experience. Um, as I say here, if you're walking with someone else, um, spend some time talking about it. And uh, most of all, we want you to have fun. So you're going to go out, you're going to walk, um, take pictures. And then at the end, what we need you to do is call um, three photos, up to three photos, maybe it's just one, three, up to three photos of aspects of the loop that you enjoy and that you think are really an asset. Um, and then we also want to hear from you up to three photos of something that you would change, things that most need improvement to really make it a better place for people um, uh, being on the loop or moving, um, moving up and down the loop. Um, then you're gonna send us those photos in an email, um, include a caption for each, um, explain why you selected it and just let us know where it is. Some of them are gonna be obvious, but if it's something really detailed, just let us know where it is. And then um, send it to, you're gonna send it to our loop, um, email address inbox. This is to help save Dan's inbox from um, uh, uh, getting inundated and also to help us keep better track of them. So it's the loop at beavertonoregon.gov. Um, we're gonna give you two weeks to do this. So by Wednesday the 14th. Um, and then just keep, you know, I know pictures can um, sometimes be really big. And so just keep your emails under 10 megabytes. If you need to split up your email, great. Um, you know, and send it to us in a couple of emails. And then just in the subject line, just write picture the loop and that'll just help us find them and capture them later. Um, so um, thank you so much for doing this. It's not mandatory, but we hope you will. Um, we've all spent time looking at the loop um, and I think the project will just really benefit from hearing um, from uh, more from all of you. Um, we're gonna get your pictures. We're gonna organize them and sort them. Um, we hope to see some common themes. Um, that might tie into things we've already seen, but we also wanna find out if maybe there's some information we haven't even picked up on at all. And that, that's also gonna be really helpful to us. Um, so at our next meeting, we're gonna share what we get back from all of you, um, share your ideas, um, share your feedback, your commentary, and then we'll also make some time for all of you to discuss and um, your observations and kind of hear from each other. So. Uh, as I said, Dan's going to send this out. You can always reach him if you have questions. And then we've put um, the map here, just so you've got it as a guide. Um, I have walked this um, just on my own in the past, and it's about 15 minutes from end to end at a good, decent pace. So um, just know that. Um, and I saw the chat going a little crazy here, which I did not see the chat. I don't know if it's questions about this, but I'm open to um, hear your uh, I can help you out with that. Just a couple of things. Um, uh, Ginger has encouraged anyone out there on Farmer's Market Day, thank you for um, stop by and see her at the information booth and um, say hi and let her know you're also on the CAC. Um, I'm sure she'd love that. Uh, there was a question about the distance, which you've helped with. And then um, I also uh, have a, I don't know if it's in here, Jean, or not, but it'd be really helpful if you just kind of noted the day of the week and the rough time. Um, and, you know, feel free to go out in the evening. Like the photo might not be great, but it might be really great to show us how dark it is. Um, if you just happen to walk in the evening and, you, and you'd like to experience that, um, you know, maybe it's quieter, but it's darker. Um, so whatever suits or, you know, go out anytime, but um, whatever suits your needs that way. But if you could just make a note of that, that would be great. Okay. Rachel, great. I, see I can add that. Have your hand up. Um, yep. Yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, so I've, I know some people who may also be interested in like contributing this type of information. Would you prefer, would you be interested in that from other people? Or would, would we prefer to keep this to CAC members only just so that we can narrow things down? We are going to have a follow on community activity that's somewhat related. Um, and we're still working on that. But um, Got it. That, yeah. There'll be a more, if you could just keep it to the CAC for now, but um, yeah, I think we'll be using some of this for a broader community activity. And Rachel, that's just a function of my ability to sort through pictures effectively. 
Yeah, that's why I thought I would ask before <laughs> just sharing it so with other people. We Thank might, you. Yeah, we might tie that. I know we'll have some sort of sort of community mapping, walking workshop on your own sort of thing. We might, um, we've talked about, and I think we still need to sort out the capacity, but um, sort of social media campaign with that. But that also has to be moderated. So we just have to figure out the, how to make that work. So thank you for asking that. Anyone else have a question? You'll get more details in your email. All right. Hope you all are able to participate. I'm going to participate. I haven't been out there in a little while. It'll be good. Um, any other comments or questions for the good of the order? Hearing none. Uh, as I mentioned, we will be in. Dan, let's coordinate um, sending out the follow-up survey with the instructions for the homework. Um, but I will, um, just so that we don't bombard them with their, <laughs> with your email, we'll, we'll do our best to not bombard you. I'll make sure to include, I, I have a draft of this follow-up survey going. I'll get in there and revise it and make sure to include a question about what we might be able to do to make these meetings more effective for you or if you're having trouble hearing any yeah, of that. Yeah, Deb, let's, uh, let's send a single mailing out tomorrow yeah. sometime. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I'll get you the link for the survey. Well, thank you all so much for your um, participation and attention. I realize it was a gorgeous evening um, to be sitting inside in front of your computer. So really appreciate the extra effort on that. Um, and we'll be getting down to uh, rolling up our sleeves and some real business at the next meeting. Uh, thank you, Deb. Thank you for facilitating. Uh, thanks, everybody. I wanted to point out a few things first along the lines of what Deb said. Uh, you know, there is an opportunity cost for participating in these meetings. Uh, and directly in this case, I noticed that the high of the day and maybe the year 72 degrees occurred while we were at this meeting. And I believe most of you were inside, or at least appeared to be inside. Uh, the, uh, the second thing I wanted to just say uh, is that uh, uh, somebody told me once that the Buddhist definition of word, of work, is not just doing something, but doing something with other people or someone else. Uh, and I'm sure that we've all had, especially if we have spouses, we know that sometimes it's not quite as straightforward to do something when you have to do something with somebody else. But my experience has been that invariably you get a better result and also, if you're paying attention, it can be a more gratifying process, not just at the end, but during it as well. So I, I feel very good about this meeting and having a good start working with you guys uh, and accomplishing something important for, for the whole city of Beaverton. So thank you for your time. And uh, we'll be in touch tomorrow with the next step. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.